you go ahead and let a few people know that we in here tonight. So we going to rap about something. I'm just going to talk about something. It may, um, what I'm going to talk about tonight might relate to somebody else that you know, uh, may even relate to you. It just depends on who listens to me tonight. But, um, I was actually home and I was trying my best to, um, get myself, you know, settled down. I don't been, been out today. I don't know already took all my glamour shots and all that. So I come home, I was going to, you know, get myself chilled out, but God wouldn't let me get undressed. And I kept wondering like, okay, God, come on now, what's going on? Now I see why he didn't want to let me get undressed because I need to, um, I need to obey him. So I'm going to go ahead and move in on what it is that I need to talk about tonight. Um, just from a, I, I believe it was, um, I want to say that he gave me a, a, like a motivation to do it, um, based on something that I saw. It let me know that definitely it's okay for you to go ahead and for you to do this. Um, you know, so I'm going to, I got a couple of places that I'm going to show in scripture, but I want to talk to y'all tonight. And what I'm going to talk is from a pastor's perspective from a pastor's um, perspective, if you have a uh, pastor, if you have, you know, someone that is, uh, serves in a, you know, in a, a, whatever you want to call them, you know, some folks call it a uh, shepherd, some folks, it doesn't matter what capacity that you, you know, you call it in. If they serve in a, a shepherd's capacity, a, a bishop, a, you know, whatever, a, a shepherd's capacity, I don't want to say, I want to make sure that I don't say it in, um, like a prophet in your life or what have you, because that's not, that's not someone really that serves in a shepherd's capacity in, in your life. You know, that's a voice in your life, but that's not someone that serves in a shepherd's capacity. I want to, to talk tonight, you know, from my heart and from a place of what I've had to experience and the things that I've had to endure and learn from this point to where I am now from a shepherd's perspective perspective uh some of you you know some of you need to listen to this because you need to listen to it in order to in an effort for several reasons some of you need to listen because you may be a shepherd at one point in life you never know who knew that i would be you know back in the day if you would have told me delphine you're gonna be pastor and i'd have probably shot you a couple birds or whatever you know and just told you some things that you know i know that was not god i wouldn't have ever thought that i would be sitting in the seat that i am sitting in and also going to other levels in it as I am I wouldn't have ever thought that so you just don't ever know what God has set for your life and you want to be in a position as to where when you carry out assignments you want to carry out the assignments properly you know you don't want to you 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 don't you, you don't want to be a failure at it you want to carry out the assignments in a proper manner so for one reason I'm sharing it is because some of you may be in this seat at one moment at some time in life. Another reason why I am sharing it is because some of you have shepherds and you need to know exactly what the deal is when dealing with a shepherd from a shepherd's point of view, from a perspective of a shepherd. Now, this is not to uh, to bother you. So let me put this disclaimer out here. This is not to, to bother you or to probe at you about any money because that's what y'all think about shepherds that's the stigma that has been put out about shepherds you know uh, they just always just want to try to get somebody money well mcdonald's trying to get your money too uh you know the clothing stores and the toyota wants your money and you know chevrolet wants your money as well you know so if you know if that's the case if that's how you want to look at it so some people would think that you know uh you know i don't want to hear that i don't care but listen you need to hear it because you need to know you need to understand that this is a very vital vital place, a very vital position to be in people's lives. And there are some truths that have to come with it. You know, there are some things that must be known in some ways of how to handle it. You know, I don't know whether y'all have paid any attention, but over the last several years, it hasn't been as, um, as predominant in since the 2020 when the pandemic came, but there were several pastors prior to the pandemic. There was like this whole big thing, like a, a epidemic was going on of pastors that were literally killing themselves. You know, they were committing suicide. They were literally just going through all types of things. And a lot of it, I believe, come from because of the, the responsibility that is put on pastors. There is a great responsibility 
responsibility that is put on pastors when when the people want the pastor to carry responsibility but they don't want to carry any responsibility there is a lopsided or warp-sided however you want to say it um, effect that goes with it where people think that you know where the pastor's supposed to be there when i call but where are you when the pastor calls you understand what i'm saying they, they it's a it's a warp-sided thing and because of the fact that you don't ever know what god has for your life and you don't ever know how god has purpose for your life you don't ever know what you're going to be in life it's very vital that when you come into contact with people or you come you know you got to know how to respect that place because you don't ever know at some point in time in life it may change for you to be in that place right and so it makes me think of when i was a young girl having been out beside my mom's house that was the hangout spot that was where we, we you know people stood they drunk out there in the little park area and they would smoke drink or what have you well at one point in time i was in the house when the smoking and the drinking was going on but as i got older i moved outside to the park where the smoking and the drinking was going on and there were ladies sweet ladies that god fearing ladies named like miss louise crittenden that would pass by miss ophelia frazier that would pass by um miss dorothy jarrett that would pass by and all and i would have this thing about myself where i would want to hide what it was that i was doing where that was out of a reverence and a respect there was reverend bass even though i didn't you know frequent the church i still knew when reverend bass came by that reverend bass you know and i knew to speak to reverend bass i knew to show some respect and some regards to reverend bass because of the sacred desk that he the position that he was in well now check this out now i'm under the tree i'm getting high as a kite you know i'm under the tree i didn't wasn't a big drinker you know it didn't take much for me with drinking i like to smoke weed so i'm getting high as a kite under the tree when i but i have a regard for the man of the cloth or the woman you know a, a woman of god when they would come by that i would put this stuff up out of respect for them not knowing now that in 1997 the Lord would get in Delphine's heart not knowing not knowing that the Lord was going to get in Delphine's heart in 97 where the Lord gets in Delphine's heart in 97 literally calls her out of darkness into what is called a marvelous light right calls me out of darkness into a marvelous light I still don't know in 1997, y'all can play with it if you want to, but when I do what I do, you better believe it's got a reason behind it. I don't talk for nothing. I ain't got but so many words to live by. So when I put them out here, they got a purpose. You better believe it now. So check this out. Now, I don't know that even in 97 when the Lord saved me, when I asked to be saved, asked him to come into my life, you know, to save me, I still didn't know that I would be sitting in the position that I'm sitting in right now. I still didn't see that I would be a pastor. Still didn't see that. Did not know that at all. Did not know. Didn't know what to expect for real. Why? Because I'm in a new place. So I didn't know what to expect. All I know, I, I, I knew was, was I was panting after a God now that they told me would make my life better. I was in pursuit of a God that they said would make things better for me so that's what I was after so that's all I knew that was all I knew I didn't know anything of the fact that there was going to be this call on my life to be an intercessor did not know it did not know there would be a call on my life to be an apostle of prayer did not know it did not know that there would be this call on my life that would that I would pastor did not know any of this did not know that I would be a, a entrepreneur did not know any of this all I knew was was that I was interested in God because it was like a need for God in my life. Well, look at what it has produced. And so I will say to you that it is very important and very vital that you have a respect and a regard because you don't ever know where you're going to be in life. You don't ever know what you're going to do. And so when the Lord saves me, I literally become very close to the people of the cloth that I was serving. I literally become very close to them it is uh, it, it's like something that just happens i'm traveling with them 
I'm literally, you know, up under them at all times. Um, they, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm driving for them, uh, however the case, anything that I could do, I found myself doing every bit of that, every bit of that, you know, literally not knowing still, I'm not knowing that, Hey, that one day girl, you're going to be in this position. I did not know that. One day you're going to be in this position. It makes me think about David not knowing while his daddy was trying to call himself mistreating him and sending him out there to take care of the sheep. David not knowing that one day, son, you're going to be a shepherd over God's people. Not knowing it. Could have thought while he was out there, man, why is my dad doing this to me? Why is my dad putting me out here like this? Why am I the black sheep in my family? Why is this going like this? Not even realizing that it had a meaning to it. And so what I'm saying to you tonight is, is please don't disregard. Please don't handle things any type of way just because you don't see what the next moment holds or what, or you don't see what's down the road. Be very, 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 very careful of how you go about doing things. Be very careful. So now I'm I'm serving them. I'm with them, still not knowing that I will be in the place that I am in. And I'm working up to help y'all to understand something. I still don't don't know, didn't know that I would be in the place that I'm in. Still didn't know. Things started shifting in my life that would start putting everything in its place, in its perspective. I still don't know. I'm thinking that, you know, I know that I am a, a, a vital part of the body of Christ or that I have something to do for the body of Christ, but I'm still not knowing exactly what it is. So I start out and when on my journey. When I start on my journey, I start out as a, a, a worship leader. You know, that's what I start out as because, hey, Delphine can sing songs. So let's, let's let Delphine be a worship leader. So I start out as a worship leader, still not realizing that from a worship leader, I would then increase on to be uh, become an intercessor as I'm increasing the Lord is steady dealing with the things that he's building inside of me I don't I didn't realize this I still didn't get this I still didn't get it so I'm just going on with the journey of where the Lord would take me for me to be well then I get to this place right here and this place of pastoring seven years now August 31st of this year will be eight years. We'll celebrate the eighth anniversary going into the eighth year of being of doing pastoring, being a pastor. So this is this is the place of where I would be. So I want to talk to y'all just a little bit about this stuff and how this stuff actually operates for two reasons, like I told you. One reason is because some of you that are under my voice, at some point in time, you may become this. You may become a pastor. You may be called in that capacity. Second reason is is, is because those of you that have pastors so that you know how to regard and to how to cover and how to respect what is going on in that capacity, right? Okay, so look, let's go with this right here. I want to show y'all something. I want to show y'all something. I'm going to literally, the first place that I'm going, I'm going to read a, um, I'm going to read a text of scripture. I'm going to read a text of scripture for y'all to 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 give meaning to um to this right here. All right, so I'm going the first text I'm going to read is going to be out of John chapter 11. John chapter 11, I'm going to read a verse out of John chapter 11 to give context so that you understand this. This is what uh John chapter Let me make sure I got it right. Yeah, John chapter 11. Did I get the right one? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Just one second. Let me make sure I got the right one here. Let's make sure I got the right one here. I'm sorry, John 10 and verse 11. I misquoted it. I'm sorry. John 10 and verse 11. So I'm going to read this to you. John 10. And verse 11, I'm going to grab it in, let me find my KJV. I like my KJV. All right, so the King James Version says this here. I am the good shepherd. 
and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Please hear this. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Let me tell y'all something. If the pastor is doing it right, the pastor is giving their life for you. If they're doing it right, they're giving their life for you. What does it mean to give their life? What 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 does it mean that they're giving their life? A lot of times, it's a lot of things that they would like to do that they cannot do because they have to take in regards to you. They have to literally take regards to you and what you have going on. They literally probably would like to um, be in Miami lying on the beach. But, check this out, because you are literally struggling in an area they can't do that because they need to be on their face for you. Uh Uh-huh, so that is the giving up of one's life. Again, John 10, you saw it. See, this is the thing where people error at. People think that because this is in reference to where Jesus is talking, they think that it is strictly about Jesus and fail to realize that when people become shepherds, when people accept the call into pastoring and become shepherds, they're literally doing the same thing that Jesus did. Now, let me help you a little bit further. Jesus came from the Father. So if you can believe that Jesus could do it, why can't you believe that someone else could do it? Uh, The Father was the one where it all originated. Jesus came forth from the Father, right? No separate entity. Jesus came forth from the Father. So if you could believe in the Son, how come you can't believe in the person that the Lord has placed over your life or the, the shepherd that the Lord has given you for your life? Why can't you believe that they would lay down their life as well? John 10 and verse 11 again. He says, I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. So if shepherding is being done correctly, there's going to be a giving of life. There's literally going to be times where you're going to want to be sleepy. You're going to be very, very sleepy, but you've got to get up because a call has came in that such and such, you know, were over there fighting and boom, you got to get up to go over there to let the anointing use you to stop the fighting that is going on to literally help to deal with and bring some order and some subjection to what is going on. So you're not going to be able to get that sleep. So you literally have got to give up of your life. Well, you know what? I would like to take a whole month off and go to Paris, France. Why can't you? Well, look, I, it's the giving up of my life. You know, it is the the literal uh, of me doing what needs to be done in order to make sure that the sheep are okay. Why? Because I see a couple of sheep that are over here close to the fence. I done told them on several occasions, get your butt off them over there close to that fence, but not that they go again over there close to that fence so that is the giving up of life always got to keep watching out for what the sheep is doing I'm telling y'all listen you ought to have a I I hope after you hear this you have a better regard for those that have given their life you have a better regard for and this ain't about you know nothing about trying to get you I get up some money you ought to do that anyway If you know the truth, you should do that anyway. This is so that you understand that at some point in time, God could call you into this position. And you need to know the full understanding of it. And then on another token, you need to know how to support, how to be there for, how to pray for those that are literally giving their lives on your behalf. It is a very vital thing to do. Okay, next scripture. Next scripture. I'm going to go now to Jeremiah I'm going to run over to Jeremiah chapter 3, I want to say it is. Jeremiah chapter 3. I'm going to grab another scripture. So the shepherd is giving up their life. Okay, Jeremiah chapter 3. I'm going to get verse 15 in this right here. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15. Y'all make sure that you share the video. People need to know. They need to know how to do this and do this properly now. Because this ain't no, I'm not trying to sell anything. Uh -uh. I'm who I am and this is what I do. I'm trying to help some people to understand and know the truth of the matter. So look, this is Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15. This is the Lord speaking. He says, and I will give you pastors according to my heart. Check it out to my heart, according to my heart, which shall feed you. Notice the assignments of the pastor going to have the heart of God. One that takes a lot to get. 
If I can just put a pen right there for a second, that's not an easy thing to have, y'all. It's the heart of God. Because when you are pastoring, people would dog you. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? And it would sometimes be some of those that serve with you that would literally <clears throat> turn around and bite you. You understand? So that's not always an easy thing to be done. It's not always easy to know that you got a message and you got to say what God wants you to say. And they don't like the fact that you're saying it. That's not an easy easy things. It's not an easy thing for you to be accused of things that you are not even guilty of. It's not an easy thing. It's not an easy thing for people to take personal the things that you minister when you are literally trying to teach the whole entire group on how to be successful in things. But because one person is committing that sin, they literally think that the message has been orchestrated for them. It's not an easy thing when they don't realize that, hey, listen, I if I got a hundred people in here, I don't want what this one individual is doing to literally damage the whole flock from everybody. And so I got to make sure that it is known what is happening because there is a wolf that has gotten among us. It is not an easy thing. And so what the wolf does is literally tries to cause chaos so that it looks like the shepherd is not shepherding right or not shepherding properly when in fact the problem is the sin that's going on inside of the wolf. The issue that the wolf has, that is the problem. See, y'all don't understand. I'm telling the mind of a pastor now because a lot of times people look at the glamour of it. You know, I take pictures every Sunday. Got in a habit of doing that. If I don't do it, didn't do it one Sunday, got some messages. Hey, where you at? Where your pictures at? What have you? I take them every Sunday and every Sunday y'all see me, I'm glammed up. I'm, I'm, I'm all glammed up. But how many of you know this right here, that there have been times I have preached literally bleeding with blood as more red than this shirt that's on my body, huh? literally bleeding with more blood, blood redder than this shirt that is on my body, literally having to preach through pain, literally having to preach through betrayal, literally having to preach through deception and everything, but literally having to go on about my business with it. How many of you knew that? And you would say, your pictures are so beautiful. And I would say, thank you. You know, whether I commented or not, I always give thanks for everything. But in the in, in some of the Sundays I would say but if you only knew what I had to deal with if you only knew where I was you know and what was going on if you only knew why my love for God is the way it is if you only knew right and they say oh you know what you know oh my God I'm just so proud of you I see you doing so much you you are doing business and all if y'all only knew what I have to deal with right if you only knew that I was the first one that literally has done this among my immediate family, has stepped out in this arena like this, did not have anybody that would sit down and just talk to me before I did it. I just took out and was not afraid to take a chance. So if you only knew how many times I had to bump my head, if you only knew how many times I was told no, but would not take the no and kept going, if you only knew. If you only knew. See, if you only knew what's really going on, if you only knew. And so the Lord says this, Jeremiah 3, 15 again. I will give you pastors according to mine own heart. What is the heart of God? The heart of God is people. That is the heart of God. The heart of God is people. Christ died for people. That's where the heart of God resides. The heart of God resides with people. Hear me. That is the reason why. Father, I bless you and I love you, man. That is the reason why, no matter what we do, God forgives us except for blasphemy. Now, he won't tolerate that. Why? Because God has a heart for people. That is the heart of God. It is for people. And if a shepherd is doing it properly, the shepherd is going to have a heart for people. The shepherd is going to be in a position as to where sometimes it may look like how in the world can you fool with them when you know exactly what they done done. You already know. But see, let me tell y'all, if you missed the word that I said, when you know what they have done, so hopefully it's not something that they will continue to do or to do 
do again when you know what they have done. See, the thing about forgiveness is, is forgiveness forgives for what has been done. That's where forgiveness steps in. Forgiveness steps in for what has been done. That's why when Jesus died, the veil in the temple was torn. It was rent and it went back and it and it healed from the back. And so it's a healing from what has been done. And But where the blood comes, I'm going to show you. I don't want to get ahead of myself because I'm going to show you this in scripture so that, so that you know this. Now, again, let's go. Let me finish this text here. In Jeremiah 3 and 15, I will give you pastors after mine heart, which shall feed you. Another assignment of a pastor is to feed you. It's to feed you. That is the assignment of a pastor. It is to feed you. Listen to what I'm saying to you. Prophets do not feed you. Prophets point you in the direction of where you are to go. Apostles establish you. That is what they do. They provide a firm foreign, firm foundation. Evangelists literally light a fire in you. They are the motivators. That's what they are. They are the fire starters. Uh, the teacher is going to teach you or equip you for things. Uh, but that pastor is going to feed you. So that pastor, that means when you are being fed, that pastor is literally right there with you. That's what happens when feeding you. Notice the text it uses, how it expresses itself. It says the pastor will feed you. So the pastor is going to be right there hands on. Many people are misappropriating things. They're literally, you cannot call a prophet the pastor. If a prophet is a pastor, it has, they have to be known in the capacity of being a pastor. You cannot just say, well, you know, that prophet is leading. No, 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 baby. You got things all misconstrued. I hate to get into the full details of that, but you got things all misconstrued. I literally was just asking and praying about this. I was like, God, you know what? I'm going to throw this little piece out here, just a little nugget for y'all to know. I said, God, listen, let me ask you something right here. I said, is it right for um, um, for um, prophets to be taking, uh, receiving tithes and offerings from people? Is is that is that right to do? I, 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 I literally was asking God about that. You know what I'm saying? Because um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that right there for y'all to ponder, ponder in your heart. Shepherds, okay, the shepherd, the Lord said feeds. The Lord said feeds, the shepherd feed. So now I want you to think about in an effort of feeding a child. You can't be in the kitchen and the child is in the living room and you say, I'm feeding the baby. No, you're not. You're not feeding the baby. If you are feeding the baby, then you are right there with the baby. And you are literally assisting the baby in eating. And making sure that what the baby eats is the proper things. That's what you're doing. You're making sure that they're eating the proper things. You are not uh, in another room from them. So this is what he says that he's going to do. Okay, we shall feed you. Let me finish the text. With knowledge and understanding. If they're legitimate, there should be some knowledge and some understanding. Now, when you understand what knowledge is, you know, knowledge is information. But then you're going to have, you're going to have understanding of what knowledge is given to you. So you're not going to leave from the place still trying to figure out what in the world. What in the, what in the world was they talking about? You're not going, I don't, I don't. I don't get that. You're not going to leave from the place like that. But they're going to feed you with knowledge and understanding. Case in point, which is the reason why I feel the Lord has shifted me to what is called the LG Center. And the LG Center being based off of the scripture that says that I have given you all things which pertain to life and godliness. Why? Because that is the knowledge and understanding. We, a lot of times, were being just literally exploited with so much um, biblical information and, and so many different theologies and concepts of things to the point that we were failing in life, right? And so that's what caused people to get frustrated, I believe, and that's why people started getting having attitudes against uh, against God, you know, and against the, what, uh, uh, the Word of God. 
God and started, you know, I don't think that Bible is true. Well, this is the thing about it. To me, the Bible is a book of principles. That's what I call it. I call it a book of principles because I view it as a book of principles. I catch the concept of what is being said about it. It's not my position to literally try to prove that it is a lie because there is no way that I can be able to prove that just like it says the fool have said in his heart that there is no God. That's what it says. The fool have said that in his heart. But you can't get anybody to prove anywhere that there is no God. There is no way that they can do that. No way, shape, form. Haven't been able to do it. Now, many have lied and said that they have been able to prove it, but they haven't been able to prove that there is a no God. And then there is, they can't, well, they say, well, you know what, I, I, you know, because nobody knows everything, see. Nobody knows everything. And because we don't know everything, how can I say that there is no God? When I don't know everything. Okay, uh uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm going to leave you with that one. How can I say that there is no God when I don't know everything? When I don't know everything, even the smartest person in the world does not know everything. You can go right now to whom they deem to be the smartest person in the world. You can probably Google and find out who they say it is. And I bet you, you can ask them right now. Do you know Delphine Lee? Probably saying no. See, because he don't know everything. And because we don't know everything, how can we say that there is no God? Mm. Right? Mm. I can't even say that there is not a particular city inside of Texas until I look at all the cities that are in Texas and eliminate that city. So if you ask me what well, Delphine is such and such in Texas, I would have to say to you, I don't know. I need let, let me look it up to see. So there is no way. So you have to be real careful about all this theology and all this stuff that folk got going on out here. Because a lot of times what has happened with people is, is they've gotten upset. They literally have gotten pissed about something. Something didn't go their way or there was a a manner of wanting to live a certain way. And so now they become an enemy against the cross. They wanted, they, they literally, you know, I want to do my own thing, you know, whatever. So now the cross is is an enemy or something happened that God didn't fix like they wanted it fixed and now they're an enemy of the cross and so now they're going to go out and attempt to try to pollute everybody against God to try to prove this theory that there is no God or that the Bible is not correct and all this kind of stuff where the principles in it are correct the principles in it are correct. I give you one principle right now. Uh huh. Whatsoever a man soweth, there in the same shall he reap. That's right. Plant you some apples and see, don't you get some apples? See, the principles of it is correct. If you do good, good will come back to you. The principles of it is correct. So it is a book of principles. And so please understand that that is the knowledge that the pastor's assignment is to feed that's the knowledge and understanding that is the assignment of the pastor to do but it's not always easy it ain't always easy y'all it ain't always easy it ain't always easy because people don't make it easy ezekiel 33 ezekiel 33 it's not always easy because people don't make it easy it's this flesh it's this flesh. It's this flesh. Ezekiel 33. Let's see which one I want to go. I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to show y'all something. Uh, all right. So I'm going to start at verse 1. Ezekiel 33. I'm going to start at verse 1. Check this out right here. Ezekiel 33 and verse 1 says it again. And I hope you're reading along because... I, I I like it when folks challenge me with this stuff, with this right. I love it when a plan comes together. Ezekiel 33 and verse 1, it says, Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if, there's that if, that if means contingent, if the people of the land take a man of their coast, 
and set him for their watchmen. Check it out what he's saying now. This watchman here is going to be synonymous of a pastor. Says, look now, I'll, he says, oh, okay, this is what I want you to do. I'm going to bring a sword against the land, but I want you to tell them to get a watchman. Somebody better hear me tonight. Somebody need to hear me tonight. I'm going to tell you something. You can keep playing with this stuff, solo dolo, all you want to, baby. You can keep playing with it all you want to. Solo dolo, going to do how you want to do it. And let me know how that turn out for you. Uh, come back and see me in just a little while and let me know. I'll still be pastoring and still be doing what I'm doing as long as I can hold on because I'm trying to hold on as best I can. But let me know how that worked for you. Come holler let me. Let me know how that turned out for you. He says, look now, a, a, a sword go come upon the land. And if the people that take a man of the coast tell them to set a man up for the watchman, tell them to get him a pastor now. Tell them to get him a shepherd now. Okay. Verse 3. If when he seeth the sword, excuse me, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. I'd like to hit myself just then. Said the watchman, now do you understand the heart of a shepherd as to why? It ain't always easy, y'all. It's it, it ain't always easy. It is a place to be respected. I look. It is a place to be respected. Even it, it, look, it, you don't even have to be pastoring. You can have a business. You are literally the pastor of that business. Cause you gotta watch your stuff to make sure that everything is all right. You gotta watch your stuff to make sure. That there's not a thief coming in to break in your stuff. You got to check your stuff. I have to go out there and check my stuff on the property. I got to look at the cameras and look to see anything been moving that don't need to be moving. Because why? I'm the shepherd of Tasty Treats, so to speak. So I have to watch this stuff to make sure. So he says, he will warn the people. Verse 4, then whosoever... Hear it the sound of the trumpet mm. and take him not warning. Jesus Christ, help us. If the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be on his own head. You ain't going to blame me for it. You ain't going to blame me. You not going to blame. I don't care what you tell folks. I don't care what you tell people. Oh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm on, I, I, I sit under a uh, 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 pastor Delphi and I say, hey, 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 look here, sweetheart. You better tell them what you did and accept your own responsibility because the sword has come, but I told you that junk was going to happen. Told you. Okay, check it out because God going to always tell us. Keep talking to me, Jesus. Look at him, hit me upside the head if you got to, if I ain't listening. Hit me. Whosoever hear the trumpet again and take him not the warning and the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be on his own head. Be on his own head is what it say. Verse 5. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not the warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. You see it? Did y'all see it? Did you see it? Am I by myself? Can you hear me now? <laughs> Static in the line. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? It says it shall be upon his own head. But the one that listened shall deliver his own soul. Whose responsibility? Shall deliver his own soul. Pastor K, Pastor told you. What the Lord said, let you know what the Lord said. You ain't want to listen to it? Okay, that's up to you. That's on you. Pastor delivered the word. It ain't always easy to do it, y'all. I'm telling you, it's not always easy. It ain't something that you take delight in. Do you know some messages you literally want to cry about when you know now, the thing with me is, in my messages, a lot of times the Lord will give me a sporadic, just on the spot message for me to be able to give. And I realize, I believe I know why he does that with me. It's because my heart being the way that it is, God doesn't want me to be tweaking it, you know, trying to fix it or what have you, because I have this sentimental part that is inside of me. I took that sentimental nature from my mama. You know, I have this easy go, you know, it's an easy part to my heart. And so God doesn't want me to be tweaking it. He says, no, I need you to tell them what I said. I 
I want the word to be given to them precise as I have spoken for it to be given. I don't want you trying to change nothing. I don't want you adding to it nor taking away from it. So therefore, I'm going to literally just give it to you right at the moment that you need to speak because I don't want you to be in a situation like Moses. You come trying to tell me all the reasons why you can't do it. Well, God, you know, wait, come on now, Lord. Don't do them like that, Jesus. You not look, God. Now you you know you know she already dealing with the death in her family, God. You know, so you know that just made her a little bit vulnerable. You know what I'm saying, God? You know, like when that death came in the family, it, she got a little vulnerable, Lord, and and you know, and just became open for some stuff. So come on, God, please, you know. And see, the Lord didn't want me to be like that because He's saying, listen, I, I've already talked to them concerning this before this would even happen like this, and had they been in a place where they would allow me to make them whole, those things wouldn't even happen. But because they did not become subject to what I was saying and didn't allow me to make them whole in areas, now they're dealing with these things right here. And I want you to say this. And I want you to say it exactly like this, Delphine. And so then he puts me, Jimmy, on the spot and causes me to have to say some things. And it's not, I'm telling you, even in the midst of saying it, that's why when I preach, if you'll notice, I do a lot of, I talk a lot, you know, I come out talking, oh Lord, have mercy, you will hear me saying stuff like that, or you'll hear me, Jesus Christ, you want me to do this, uh, you really want me to do this, and you'll catch me having conversations with him, because I'll be heard what he want me to say, and then there I go saying, for real, man, okay, look, hold up just one second, wait a minute, God, now you got me covered, right, because you know they gonna act a fool about this, and so you do got me covered, so you catch me having conversations with him and some folks call that humorous but really and truly I'm having an actual conversation with him I'm literally having an actual conversation with him because what I'm saying is is you serious you really want me to say this <laughs> Woo! okay all right okay then you really want me to do this yeah I want you to do this I want you to say this because I've sent the warning the watchman came with the warning. Did not take the warning. Okay, so the blood is on their hand. Okay, so let's finish. All right, verse 6. Verse 6 says this right here. Jeremiah, what, 33 in verse 6? It says, but if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet. This is the part I want to talk to y'all about, making sure as pastors that we do the right thing. And I commit myself to being one that will do the right thing. I do as best I can. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood shall require at the watchman's hand. So it says, okay, look. The person will be taken away because of the see the sword was having to come because of there was some iniquity on site. That's why a sword has to show up. But it says that a watchman has the ability to be able to stand guard over that to literally bring restoration so that the sword does not destroy. But it says if the watchman does not warn the people regarding the sword and just lets them go on the way they have, yes, the sword is coming because of the iniquity of the people, but the shepherd is going to literally be smitten for it because the shepherd didn't tell the people people that this was coming okay so listen let me make it plain for you some people in sin let's just use it in the analogy some of the people in the in the in the ministry i do ministry not church some of the people in the ministry are in sin right okay they are living in sin shepherd does not say anything about the sin that is going on swore comes in and literally does damage or whatever it is going to do Shepherd is going to be smitten as well 
because Shepherd did not give warning to the people that the sword was going to come. The sword was going to come. But now if Shepherd will do what Shepherd was assigned to do and tell the people, listen, hey, look, listen, you are wrong in what you were doing. The manner of how you are conducting yourself is wrong. It does not exemplify God at all. Listen, we've all been in places where we have not exemplified God in what it is that we were doing. We've all been guilty of it, including me. I have to check myself even now. Does that look like God fiend? Does that act like God fiend? Wait a minute. Would God handle that like that fiend? Hold up. Would God cuss that woman out fiend? I have to talk to myself even right now. So if you're in a manner, you know, we've all been in a place where we have literally disregarded the things of God. We have not conducted ourselves properly as we should. We have not regarded the sacredness of the office. We have not literally regarded the covenant and had literally uh, uh, the ark of the covenant. We have not protected it as we should. We've all been there. The thing of it is, is this. Was it because we were not warned? Or was it because we just still chose to do what we wanted to do? Were we hiding behind an excuse? Some people are hiding behind excuses of, you know, I, I got hurt over at the other other church. I just don't want to deal with uh, people because I don't been hurt at this other church. Well, I told you when I first started talking what it said about he give you pastors after his heart. You have to literally keep on reviving your heart because things are going to always be coming to try to stifle your heart. You don't literally get to live off of one heart. Not when you're serving God. You don't literally get to live off of one heart, y'all. You've got to literally, some hearts you got to throw away and, got, and God's got to give you a whole new heart. He's got to give you a whole new heart because if he does not give you a whole new heart and it's still living based off of the stuff that's done happened to it, you're not going to treat those people right. You're going to not, you're not going to handle those people right. So that's why David said, create in me a clean heart. You got to get rid of this heart that I had, this old heart of mine. You got to get rid of it, guys. So some folk are living behind that excuse. That's the excuse that they're they're hiding behind because of the fact of not wanting to do what is right, not literally wanting to submit themselves and make themselves subject. Some folks just literally, and it's the truth. I'm sorry. It is the truth. I told y'all I was going to tell the truth. That's all I know to do is to tell the truth. Some folk are literally in that place. That is what they are hiding behind. That has become a cloak for them. Though, So it makes them look as though they are the victim in things when they haven't been the victim in so long. That junk has been years past, but they're still playing the victim's mentality in things because of the simple fact they don't want to surrender. They don't want to surrender. They don't want to surrender. Bottom line. They don't want to surrender. So then we look for excuses. Whole another message. Whole another message. So it says now. Hmm. Verse 7, Jeremiah 33 and 7. It says, So thou, O it says, So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Whether you like it or not, God done set a watchman over your soul. Whether you like it or not, God has put a watchman over your soul. And let me tell you this: you don't get to decide who it is. You can't cast lots to decide who it is. You don't get that opportunity. Lord knows you don't. Mm -mm. You don't get that opportunity. Mm -mm. The Lord determines who it is he wants. And the one thing that I have realized is, is he knows what's best, what was compatible for us. He know who is compatible for us. Mm -hmm. Some of us can't grow because we're trying to make, um, you know, our brothers be the watchman. You know, if somebody our blood brother, just because they're your blood brother doesn't mean they're your watchman. 
I'm sorry, I had to tell you the truth. Some of some folks are struggling because they trying to make their cousin and all this stuff be just got them folk your family don't mean that they your watchman. That don't mean they your watchman. No. Because sometimes that can be a hindrance to your growth. That can be what causes you to not be able to grow. Is that right there? The fact that that blood is there. So he says, I have. Set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. He says, I've given you a watchman to warn you. Giving you a watchman to warn you. I need to say something to those of you that will hear me. Some people are going to come back to the play, replay and listen to it just because, you know, they knows it. And I hope that they, it, it, it really helps them and bless them. You know, I, I, I really do. I really do. They're waiting for me to get off so they can get on and listen to what I had what I had to say. And so, listen, let me tell you something. I need to say something to you, you, you hard-headed folk that just want to do things your own way. And some of you ought to know better because some of you have been around for years. This is nothing new to you. Some of you have been in the arena for years. You, you've been in what is known as the church setting for years. You need to get into ministry setting is what needs to happen because that church setting, it, 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 it it, you know, that that's played out for you. You done mastered that. So you need to step off into ministry because that's a whole nother arena. You've mastered that, but I need to say something to you. This is your warning tonight. This is your warning tonight. This is your warning regarding the sword. This is your, okay, get mad all you want to. Now, I'm telling you, I'm going to live till I die. And that's just the way I see it. I'm, I'm going to live till I die. You can get mad all you want to. I told you, I ain't trying to get nothing from you. I'm just telling you what does say the Lord. I will go take my clothes off, wash my makeup off my face and get comfortable in my place. You know, but I had to do this. This is your warning for you. This is your warning. And for those of you that feel like, you know, well, I mean, you know, I mean, God ain't going to get nothing about no warning. Sit down somewhere. You don't need to know nothing about God for real. See, all you know him is, is the God that you beg when you need your light bill money. And all you don't really know him for real. You don't really know him for real. That's the reason why you don't, you can't even see and catch the principles of how he speak. Because he gave a warning right here in Jeremiah. Gave a warning. He, we just read that the man gave a warning. So why he can't give you one? Huh? If he could lose a warning in Jeremiah, why he can't give you one? Why? I'll wait on you. Why he can't give you one? It's a warning. You want to be able to know which way and from which angle that sword is going to attempt to try to come? better find out where you watch me at. You better find out where you watch me at. You better stay close to your watchman. Scripture gave clear details that it was the watchman that was going to know. Play with it if you want to. Now look, get a look here. That's why when y'all see me, you know, people seeing me today, I went to Walmart and Andalusia today, and it was two people, two, two, was it two of them in Walmart and one in Walgreens. These, this is what I don't get. They were blown away with me. Tell me, you just look so, yeah, it was two in Walmart. You just look so different. You're so pretty. You're so, and I'm saying, uh-huh, see, y'all don't, y'all, that, that, see, I'm steady changing on you. I'm steady changing on them. I'm steady changing on them. I'm steady developing on them. I'm steady glowing on them. I'm steady growing on them now. And see, you know, they, 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 it, because see, that's what's going to happen. You, you're going to literally see me steady keep moving. I'm just trying to tell you. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm just telling you what does save the Lord. I'm just telling you the truth. This is your warning. This is your warning. It's the warning. It's the warning. Especially if I'm your shepherd. It's truly the warning. Because for one, I am shepherding to the best of my ability to be one that shepherds after God's heart. Number two, 
I feed. And I feed with knowledge and understanding. So, consider yourself warned. Consider yourself warned. I take it too. I take it too. You know, I'm, I'm no better than anybody else. But I know what God is saying tonight. It's a warning. And the way that you know which way the sword is going to swing. You got to do right by your shepherd. When the last time y'all prayed for who you call your shepherd? Hmm? When the last time you prayed for who you call your shepherd? And wasn't thinking that all you needed them for was, was for, to pray for you. When the last time you really prayed for them? When the last time you said, Father, protect them? Watch over their families. God, make sure that all that they need is taken care of. When the last time you said, Father, cover their mental capacity so that they don't lose it, God, so that they're able to handle everything that needs to be handled and they're able to shepherd correctly and that they're able to hear you when you speak and they're able to feed us with the proper nourishment that you have for us. When, when was the last time you prayed that about your watchman and didn't think that my watchman is supposed to do that for me, but I'm not supposed to do anything for my watchman. I'm not supposed to cry out for them. I'm not supposed to. I don't care how they make it. It don't bother me how they live as long as when I need something, they are there for me. When was the last time you said that? When was the last time you prayed for your watchman's children? Because don't you understand that if the watchman's children are impacted, the watchman is impacted. When was the last time you prayed for those PK, those PKs, those preacher kids? You know, prayed for them so that they would uh, not be lost out here in this world and not become a burden to their parents in an, in an essence of causing them to have to preach bleeding because they have sons and daughters that are not of the fold themselves. That makes it hard for them to tell you about your son or daughter and have to literally wonder what's going on with theirs. When was the last time you did that? When was the last time you made sure that they were okay, right? Did you make sure that they had something to eat, but you wanted them to make sure that you had something to eat? Huh? When was the last time? Have you prayed over their study time, right? Have you prayed over them being able to articulate the word of God in a proper manner like they should? Have, when was the last time you prayed, Father, allow the house that they shepherd to be, you know, well maintained and taken care of so that they're able to when they go home at night they're able to have a peaceful night's rest and, and not have to worry about how this is going to take place. When was the last time you prayed for God to give the shepherd strategies on how he wanted the house to literally be ran and how he wanted things to be? When was the last time that you did that? When was the last time? That you did that. When was the last time that you said, hey, I just want to let you know that I appreciate you. And that I love you. Mm -hmm. When was the last time that you did that? But if you don't get a call, you don't get a text, you know, I don't think Pastor care. Well, what, what you, what, what, how you think Pastor feel? You think it's okay for Pastor to feel like you don't care? But it's not okay for you to feel like pastor don't care. Come on, y'all. Come on now. It's the truth. When the watchman is the shepherd, the shepherd is the watchman, synonymous of each other. Shepherd watching over. How do you think the shepherd sees when there is sheep that are too far over at the fence? How do you think the shepherd sees when there is a wolf that is attempting to invade the land or can look at the tracks on the ground and see that there is a wolf among us? How do you think? Because the shepherd is a watchman. The shepherd watches over your soul. You need to have a, I can't tell you, I don't want to say you need, I'm going to suggest that you have a different regard 
for shepherds. Take on a different nature and a different regard for shepherds for two reasons. One reason, again, you never know. God may call you to be one. You ain't going to want folks handling you any kind of way. Number two, it they need that. You need to know how to have a proper respect and a proper regard for for a shepherd. You got to understand, this shepherding stuff is a very lonely walk. It is. It really is really is it is a very tedious walk and it's a very it can be a very lonely walk in an essence because you the one that's out in the front having to lead so you the one that has to get the words and most of the time when you get the words and all you're having to get them alone when the ten commandments were given to moses moses went alone with god The people didn't go. The people stayed. Moses went alone. So it was a lonely journey. And a lonely journey coming back. So it can be a very lonely thing. So when was the last time that you made sure that they were mentally okay? And didn't just take them for granted? Why do you feel like you can just do what you want to do when you want to do it? Hmm? Some of you feel like, man, I, I, I you know, I don't even want to go off of it, man. Some of you feel like you are so, you, you so big, you so bad, that you can just do what you want to do when you want to do it. You know, some, some, some of you are so disrespectful. And, you know, I mean, just when I just, it's very disrespectful. And the ones that needs to hear this will hear it, whether they hear it live or hear it on the playback. Some of you are very, very disrespectful. Disrespectful in the regards of you just have no respect for the leadership. No respect. But then you're like the man in the Bible that owed the money and wanted to be forgiven. But then when he got forgiven, he didn't want to forgive the man that owed him the money. You have that nature. You want to be respected, but you don't want to give respect. You want to be a boss, but you don't want to submit to a boss. Disrespectful. Disrespectful. It's a different type of life, different kind of vibe tonight. It's the truth that I'm not afraid to tell. It's the truth that I am not afraid to tell. I'm going to live till I die anyway. It is the truth. But I'm here to tell you there is a warning that has come tonight. We have been warned. We have been warned. And if we want to know, even in America, as America, if we want to know which way that sword is going to come, it would behoove us one to put the watchmen on that wall. It would behoove us to put the watchmen on the wall for intercessors to unite. I literally call it forth. For intercessors to unite based upon what is needed for the United States of America. Because Putin ain't playing. Intercessors unite. Every intercessor and everyone that has the call of intercessor upon their life be awakened right now in this hour within the womb of their spirit be awakened so that it produces they find themselves praying in the spirit even in their sleep just find themselves literally having to come forth with prayers and all because there is so much that is going on that needs to be prayed about intercessors unite within the earth within the earth we have been warned We have been warned. My name is Apostle slash Pastor Delphine Lee. I have spoken tonight as the Lord has granted unto me by the oracles of faith that rest in my heart and through the word of God which teaches the principles to live in. How to make it to eternity successfully. I have Deliver what the Lord would have for me. 
I've done it. I pray to the best of my ability with no fear. No. Adding nothing nor taking anything away. But giving it just mm -hmm. as the Lord would have for me to give. I pray that it has blessed you. I pray that you have heard. I pray that you have literally challenged yourself in some areas to get some things together. I don't care how old you are. If you're wrong, you're wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If you haven't been conducting yourselves like you should, you're wrong on your own. On your own. Get some things together. Become subject to who you know the voice of God is has the voice of God for your life. Become subject to it. Let's get this work done. Let's get this stuff done to build the kingdom of God as he has granted unto us in this earth. Father, we love you. We magnify you. We praise you. We glorify you and we exalt you. Thank you, Father, for meeting with us on this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for meeting with us on this evening. Now, I pray that you would allow your blood to cover us. Yeah, that precious blood of Jesus Christ, that crimson flow of blood, that you would allow it to watch over us and to protect us, God. I pray that you would dispatch your angels all around us, that they would be encamped about us, Lord, to protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger. I pray, Father, for the watchmen, for those that you have sent as shepherds in the land. I pray now for every pastor upon this earth that has been called by the name of Jesus Christ. Not that has been called by their own name, but has been called by the name of Jesus Christ. The shepherds that you have set in order to feed your flock and for them to feed your flock, Father, with knowledge. Oh God, and for the flock to be fed with understanding. I pray, Lord, that that would happen according to the way that you have established for it to be. I pray tonight, Father, for ears to hear, God, that these words have not fallen upon deaf ears, but they have come into ears that would hear and ears that would take action and precautionary measures concerning the things which you have spoken. Father, we line ourselves up with your purpose and your will. We line ourselves up with your plan, God, and how you have instructed for things to be. Now, God, tonight, as we rest, Father, may we have a restful night, a restful night, as we prepare for another day's journey on tomorrow. We thank you for sweet communion with the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. All right, you good people, I love you. I've done what I needed to do. So now I can go wash my face, hopefully. Get myself out the clothes, because I'm tired of them. And get myself comfortable in here. And rest, Jesus. So y'all be good tonight. I love you so much. If I haven't told you lately, I love you. I'm telling you tonight, I love you. I truly, truly do. And I hope you love me too. Be good. Catch up with y'all later. Mm-hmm.